My name is Shannon Ebner, and we're at the Altman Siegel Gallery in San Francisco. We're here for the occasion of a group exhibition that I'm one of the curators of, and the premise for the exhibition, which is called They Knew What They Wanted, is that four San Francisco galleries got together, selected an artist from each of their programs, that each of those artists were able to select works from all four galleries' inventory. Yeah, I'm Robert Bechtel. Um, we're here at the John Bergruen Gallery in San Francisco. I was uh, one of the curators for uh, a, a series of four exhibitions, each curated by a different artist. To start with, I you know, was approaching it with a kind of blank uh, slate. I had no particular uh, format you know, in, in mind, but um, as I started looking, I you know, began to see a kind of thread running through it. Most of the work follows a kind of uh, broad theme that has to do with ordinary life you know, being the, the starting point. But then there are several abstract pieces that I chose because I thought they made a good contrast with all the figurative work. And there was something maybe a little perverse about uh, including them. I spent an afternoon going around to the different galleries and documenting a lot of the works that I had seen. Certain things kind of uh, leaped out at me and uh, you know, immediately I, I understood that I would want to somehow incorporate them into what I was doing. Uh, Lee Freelander, who's someone who I've, I've always really admired, I'm very familiar with his work, and I just kind of sat down and looked through all of the different books and in a, in a very um, wonderful way got to sort of rediscover this image. I mean, this image is from one of his books that's very well known called Like a One-Eyed Cat, but it wasn't an image that was, you know, when I think of his work and, and all of the images that I kind of live with, this is not one of them, but this image um, was really exciting to me that it would be, you know, an Egyptian pyramid, that it would have these stray dogs, that it would sort of um, speak to a kind of, um, you know, very expansive sense of time. And that was one thing that began to kind of emerge as I was looking at work. So on the one hand, the idea of the unit, Ed Ruscha's piece over here, the unit, and the idea of the um, kind of elemental, so whether water's an element or um, the kind of quality of time in the Will Rogan video where it's simply a lemon that's floating in a glass of bubbly water, so it's constantly kind of moving up and down and there's this kind of endless sense of time to it. Um, that became really important to me as I began to kind of develop this. The pho photographic work from f the Frankel Gallery, the Robert Adams uh, photographs, the Lee Friedlander photographs, um, were a kind of anchor, because I, I knew that I wanted to use those. And so then you know, I began to feel that some of the other work, which was photographic, would fit with that. And I sort of was looking at them with an eye toward their inclusion of um, things that are everyday, but in a funny sense, you know, I mean, like the, the Mizrat uh, photographs of the uh, Golden Gate, uh, part of a long series that he's done shooting, you know, straight on from, I think, from his house in the Berkeley Hills uh, towards uh, what is one of the cliches of the San Francisco Bay Area. But, you know, coming up with these wonderful poetic images that are, uh, you know, kind of astounding. And the, the photographs that are uh, sort of over there, Trevor Paglin, uh, are have to do with uh, surveillance, you know, and they're shot from, these particular ones are shot from a distance of about 30 miles from this, it's some kind of a government Air Force um, facility, whatever, top secret. There's a sense that we're discovering uh, things as we you know, look at, at the works and the, the little Polaroid photographs of people posing by their cars, or you know, I mean, that's a, um, a kind of um, American category of uh, you know, f photography, candid photography. And those are all meant, in a sense, to be really public moments. You know, they're taken to show people. 
you know, the family, you know, not necessarily the, the great public. And yet there's a sense that they're very private. And these other ones kind of go in the opposite direction. You know, that they're, um, they're very public uh, looking and yet, uh, and we look into the house, you know, thinking that we're going to see something about their private moments, but we don't. I would say that Sam Gordon's work, for me, has a different kind of agency because there are these notebooks that um, are very much about a kind of daily activity. So, if anything, I think that with that work, it's kind of a moment where the thesis hopefully begins to break down a little bit, which I think is exciting to kind of have a moment because um, so much of this work really has a kind of um, it has a self-contained kind of quality to it, and the notebooks are really like, Bleh. you know, it's kind of really just the like crap of life. And I think that's important to kind of create tension. Um, you know, for me, I'm always interested in, you know, where's the tension, so. Another uh, aspect um, or another um, kind of visual element in Sam's notebooks that really appealed to me was that I noticed uh, so many ampersands and the ampersand for me is not just about um, you know acting as a conjunction but it's also about a kind of infinity symbol um, and it's about a kind of you know an, an, an ellipses a kind of this and that this and that so the fact that the ampersand could be present through those notebooks and kind of continually um, point towards a kind of uh, unfinished quality, that there's always more to say, there's always more to revise, um, there's always more to think about. For me, that was exciting that I could somehow, in a very hopefully subtle way, incorporate that into the show.